right. Uh, now we have our next speaker lined up, or uh, the first one after this uh, namaz break. And uh, she is somebody I personally look up to. Uh, uh, she needs no introduction. I'm talking about the one and the only Musharraf Hai, who is now currently the branding and marketing advisor at Kadi. And she's also a recipient of the Sitara Imtiaz and was part of the top 50 global women leaders influencers list in the Fortune mag in Fortune magazine. And uh, today she's going to talk about reimagining brands in a digital world. I'm uh, very excited about her talk. So without any further delay, I present to you the one and the only Musharraf Hai. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. Hello to all. The topic for today is reimagining brands in a digital world. And I'm here to share my thoughts with you all on the core value of brands. How do we engage with consumers in this digital world? And why do we need to reimagine brands at all? And at this point, I want to just share with you a couple of my experiences, maybe about three or four years back. One experience related to the technology fair that happens annually in Paris. And uh, we were privileged to spend a day in that technology fair, highly digital, uh, with young uh, entrepreneurs, a uh, lot of uh, startups, and above all, bots everywhere. I cannot forget seeing one of the bots doing perfect makeup on one of the humans, from foundation to blush on to mascara to uh, eyeshadow. I mean, it was fascinating. And it lighted my imagination. And I found myself thinking that night, what if I could have bots in all the salons of Pakistan? Of course, I was working for L'Oreal, so I would think of salons. On another occasion, we visited a fast fashion uh, company headquartered in Europe called Zalando, I think. 100% uh, online. And it was in their offices that I first experienced the power of AI, the power of algorithms. They showed me how they were doing uh, the consumer segmentation, consumer mapping, which was so precise, just using algorithms. And then they would be putting up the visuals of Pret, what color, what color, what style, what should be the accessories. And with it, I would think then what should be the hair color or what should be the makeup. But the kind of segmentation I saw that was being done was completely the new world. It was completely a world different from all the traditional research that we are used to. And these personal experience have all, uh, experiences have always kept, stirred me. And of course, it's no longer debatable whether we are in a digital world or not. So therefore, today, I say, if I were a brand manager again, how would I imagine brands? And I would then start by saying, brands today exist in an ecosystem, which is, of course, dynamic, and it is ever-changing. So is human behavior. Human behavior evolves, human behavior adapts to this dynamic ecosystem. And surely we can now see digitalization as the pivot, which is influencing human behavior and business choices. A famous quote, which is going uh, around a lot uh, these days, consumers vaulted five years in the adoption of digital in just eight weeks during the COVID period. In Latin America, 13 million people made their first ever e-commerce transaction. There were new entrants into the world of e-commerce. So what we could not do for years, we were able to do just within maybe eight or 10 weeks of COVID. So what are the shifts which are influencing the new ecosystem? There are four fundamental shifts to my mind, which now 
really occupy the priority set that I would have. One is new, three are not new, but definitely they were not on my priority set 12 months ago. First, major shift, of course, are the virus wars. And why it's a shift is because we desperately need measures for COVID-19, not, to, uh, to, not only just contain, but to develop a pipeline for the future. Why? This virus is not going to go away. It is going to metatize. There'll be many such viruses and we'll have to get used to a new world. And therefore we need to have a pipeline of safety measures. So it's not just about the Pfizer vaccine today, but it is many such vaccines that we will need for the future. Second, climate change. We, it was nice to talk about climate change, but sincerely I believe today that sustainability has to be at the core of driving brands, of driving businesses. We have to have responsibility to the environment. Isn't there some connection between sustainability, virus, I mean, destruction of the environment? Yes, there is. Third, inclusion, race, color, and women. Until and unless we mainstream women, where they are going to be part of the decision-making set, where there will be key influencers, societies will be left on the fringes. Fourth, of course, is the globe is interconnected. Nothing new, no rocket science. But imagine what happens. The virus is the biggest leveler. We learned that. It doesn't know race, it doesn't know women, men, gender. So is technology. It's a leveler. And uh, so is digital. It's a leveler. So science, technology, virus are all levelers. And this is the new world that we have to bring into our priority set. And these are the four shifts, I believe, which will influence, which are influencing the ecosystem. Now, in this ecosystem, then, how do, what are the aspirations and needs of consumers? What matters to them right now? It's very different from what mattered years ago. I can tell you that. And research concurs that today consumers are looking for personal safety, well-being, well-being for themselves, their family and their friends, and financial security. These have come right on top. I remember growing up at a time in my career where self-actualization, where career ambitions were really on top. All this probably was at the bottom. It's been inverted. And today when I talk to people, they really are concerned about health, financial security, well-being for themselves and their families very different aspirations and needs. Therefore, if I were to draw a picture of today's digital consumer, it would be something like this, vulnerable and uncertain, saving lives matter, responsible and very concerned about the environment and its impact, very comfortable with speed. 5G, they see it more as a need than a luxury and a sleek supply chain will be necessitated to deliver with speed the aspirations that they have. One stat that I got recently was that 34% people say that they have shopped on Instagram based on influencer recommendations. This is the rise of social commercialism. And then we have customization and personalization. The digital generation wants customization and personalization. And this they want through AI and machine learning, not the colleague quantity traditional research we used to do. Forget about it. It's AI, it's machine learning, it's precise targeting, and it is precision marketing. So therefore, what are some of the implications for marketeers in this world that we believe is already with us? And Hence, the need to rethink of how we connect with consumers. Clearly, we have to connect through digital channels, through e-commerce, and direct to consumers. How do we navigate this vast data? How do we make sense of this data? And how do we use this data to understand behaviors, aspirations, and needs? How do we personalize this data? 
in order to target consumers in that very precise manner. I mean, AI, I believe, understands human emotions probably better than we do. And it can probably find the connections better than we do. Then we have to redesign shopper journeys. This is very clear. March, April, May, June. All of us were locked in. All of us were working remotely from home. So what were consumers doing? They were really thinking they had a very different mindset. When they were surfing, they were more interested in loungewear. They wanted recommendations on loungewear. They would go to their cart, add to their cart, and then they would go back and again add more to the cart. They could shop anytime during the day. There was no specific time. They could take a break during the remote working schedule and still shop. And, and they could be shopping for themselves. They could be shopping for their family. They could be shopping different product categories. In short, the shopper journey has changed. Let's face it. And therefore, we will have to be in their mindset, in the new mindset of these consumers, not the other way around. Gen Z or whatever definitely demands transparency. They demand transparency. They demand transparency in the entire supply chain. They want to know how a product has been born. What is the DNA of this product? They, will, they already are showing a lot of concern with where did this come from? Who was responsible for it? Uh, has it been locally sourced? Uh, is it healthy? How will it impact me? Farm to table. I mean, it's growing. And can we not have farm to table for other categories? Certainly we do. I keep reading about these very special restaurants, farm to table. People go out of the way to go and enjoy a meal there. And I think, can we have farm to table concept for fashion? And why not? Then all our service platforms have become very interconnected. For example, food marketeers, they will be partnering with, uh, with health platforms. They can be partnering with online fitness, uh, uh, fitness companies. So there could be between food and fitness cross promotion and there could be cross benefits for each other. So collaboration and convergence in supply chain will be necessary to get scale and competitiveness. And, and then just to be another very important, I think, point comes to mind. How do we interface with these consumers? who are at home, who are now going to be remote working, they are using multiple interfaces in their home. How are we going to get the message simultaneously on the TV screen, on the tablet, on the phone? Because they're using all this at the same time. They have Alexa, they have Google Home. I remember a colleague of mine at, uh, uh, at L'Oreal, and now he is the head of L'Oreal, once said to me, I want to really make your home Google friendly. I said, what does that mean? He says, you know, when you are coming back from work, if it's late at night, uh, you can switch on your air conditioner before you reach. Uh, you can uh, switch on the lights. And by the time you reach the gate, you open the gate, you go up, you have a cool room, you have a lighted uh, apartment. Mm, sounded really, really quite nice. Uh, but uh, I still am waiting to do this. I haven't got there yet. How can we have conversations with these consumers at home? Two-way conversations, not one way. Now we do one-way conversations. But can these two-way conversations become less intrusive? Question mark. So the way we communicate with consumers has to radically change. Then we will need to curate the content to communicate, to engage. And curation of content is not about quantity. I believe it is about quality and it is about relevance. And that will be the differentiation that we make. Today, the 360 will become choices between interactive storytelling, e-sport, virtual reality, mobile first content, live streaming, short term stories. It's not going to be, you know, little retail store there or some, I don't know, on ground things, the thing of the past. This is the 360. 
Do we choose interactive storytelling depending on the consumer segmentation and precision marketing? Do we, do we reach them through virtual reality? Do we reach them through mobile? God knows what. So, and therefore the media mix, there are multiple media mixes. Previously, we used to talk about zapping television programs. Forget about it. Now we are sitting, the digital generation is sitting between Netflix, Snapchat, Facebook, Instagram, and now we have TikTok. So God, I mean, they are going like this. So how do we communicate? TikTok. I mean, you know, I've got to learn more about TikTok. So look at the choices. Netflix, Facebook, Insta, Snapchat, TikTok at the same time. They are ambidextrous, this generation that we are talking about. So we have talked about the new ecosystem. We have talked about the shifts influencing this ecosystem. Then we have talked about how we need to change in order to communicate with this consumer, the highly digital consumer. And now let us talk about how do we reimagine the core of our brands? The essence or raison d'etat of brands will need a vital facet. And that facet to my mind will be grounded in the purpose. The purpose to serve humanity. And this is where it changes. So from glorified product excellence and self-actualization, the levers will shift towards what am I contributing to society, to community, and how am I lifting humanity? I'm taking the cue from Melinda Gates. How can brands lift humanity? That to me will be the purpose of brands. And unless brands are grounded in this, I think the connect with today's digital generation will not be real. This is not CSR at all. This is genuinely saying, for instance, for instance, taking the example of uh, Adidas, where Adidas and Nike shared the same space. So the, it was the, the rewiring was from competitiveness to collaboration. Similarly, can surf and aerial champion water scarcity on this planet rather than just talk about stains? Uh, uh, can uh, can Lux and L'Oreal go beyond beauty to educating a girl? Imagine if we educate one billion girls, it will completely change this planet. Can we have brands collaborating for the bigger purpose, for the bigger humanity? That is absolutely the key to the purpose that I would like to put on this table. L Lifeboy and Dettol have seen a new lease of life with COVID, but is it just about germs and hand washing or should it be saving lives? So I know some of you may be surprised. Me, I mean, uh, uh, somebody who has more or less loved surf half a life, loved Lux half a life, fought Ariel half a life, whatever. But imagine, I was just imagining this, that if surf and Ariel go beyond stains, and they really address water scarcity. What if Life Boy and Dettol save lives, plenty of lives that need to be saved on a bigger scale? And I'm worth it, that's self-actualization, but I'm worth it when I can educate millions of girls. And Dove, of course, the brand which can really champion inclusion in the world. Women coming mainstream, I call it mainstreaming women. And where women are not just on the fringes because they there's a tick in the box, but they are influencing decisions. They are in the, in the, in the hot seat of real decisions. And these will be the love brands. So love brands will need a purposeful dimension. These brands will have to shift their levers from product excellence and self-actualization to lifting humanity to serving humanity and to making a difference. So I end by saying that brands must build trust. And this trust must be built on transparency, information, and data. And at the heart of the brand journey must be the 
the urge, the purpose, and a conviction, rather, to serve humanity, to make the world a better place. When we lift humanity, when we are grounded in purpose, those brands will be there for the next historical moment. So this is a big opportunity, a big space. And if I were a brand manager again, I would really be finding it an exciting journey to make a difference on this planet. Thank you all.